All right, now I've got video. Yay. So, woohoo. All right, time to get started. So, hopefully, I have fixed my lighting problem. over there. Hmm. So, so welcome to my channel. Um, this evening I'm going to be doing working on uh, Japanese loop braiding. Why are you not wanting to go on? There we go. So, hello, welcome. Uh, tonight I'm going to be working on Japanese uh, loop braiding. Uh, if you're interested in more information, exclamation braid, uh, bring up a little bit and a link to my blog. So you can check that out. Um, if I am going too fast or you want to see a specific technique, um, let me know and uh, I will adjust my camera and try to capture that the best I can for you. So, uh, Japanese loop braiding. This is the original old school method. Let's see. I am not liking that zoom. Give me a second. Let's see if I can't fix that zoom. Not happy with that. This one. Open this up. Hello, welcome back. I'm just taking a moment to see if I can't get this to zoom out just a smidge more to see what's going on. see here we go oh don't tell me I'm already zoomed all the way out yep I am all right so welcome to the channel uh, if you have any questions about what's going on uh, just let me know um, if you want to see something specific in Japanese techniques, let me know. Uh, otherwise, for a little bit, I'm just going to go ahead and chat while I braid. So, what I'm working on here is um, is a seven loop Japanese flat braid using an open closed moves. Uh, this one is not for anything in particular or uh, for any project or anything. I'm doing an experiment on tensions in loop braids. So uh, one of the things with loop braiding is it can be kind of difficult to maintain tension in multiple directions uh, for an even braid. And so I am working on some things uh, that will hopefully alleviate that and one of the tension problems across all loop braids is that the braid will over tension uh, very quickly at the end 
no matter what you do. Uh, so the width of the braid narrows very rapidly. The pattern shrinks very rapidly. Um, so, so I am making several braids and different materials and um, all using the same pattern, the same colors. Uh, so that way, uh, trying to braid all the way down to the end. And then I'm measuring out, you know, so very scientific like measuring out the at different points of the braid so that I can produce a chart um, of what things affect the different types of tension so Ooh. notebook face or Facebook note So one of the so one of the things I want to do is is uh, is do this show that there is a consistent um, uh, shrinkage rate at the end. Ludo, welcome. Was that you uh, announcing onto your group that I'm streaming? And are you the viewer that's been listening to me yammer on? <laughs> Were you on listening this morning too? Uh oh. Let's see. I think my yeah my face cam is slightly off. And by face cam I mean my laptop camera. There we go. Got to itch my nose. Ah, okay. So that was you there, but ah, oh, muted, so you didn't have to actually listen to anything. <laughs> so one of the things I did ask uh, was a <laughs> beard cam. <laughs> hey, you know what? Have you seen Chocolate or uh, Blood something or another? The guy from um, uh, Dicehead Studios. Now that's an epic beard. He could do a beard cam. So, but uh, anyways, I had asked if um, there was anything in particular that your wife was wanting, wanting to see. Was it just braiding in general? Is there, is there a specific, you know, moves that she wants to see? Because this will be done probably in about. Mm, 10 minutes or so and I can set up a new braid um, and take move requests people want to learn how to do certain things <laughs> the, if you look closely there's actually two one on either side of my chin. So, and just so you know, Ludo, I picked this time on purpose because somebody requested it. Um, I'm using right here right now is DMC floss just you know or embroidery floss I think I think it's actually one of the off-brand prism or something I think and not actually DMC but you know it's the regular old cotton embroidery thread so um, the uh, the next braid that I set up uh, well the next braid I'm gonna set up is uh, the silk bamboo uh, it's a more of a yarn uh, and it shows up great on camera a lot better than this so 
Uh, and uh, so one of the goals is to uh, also go ahead and set up um, uh, a silk braid as well. So and do that and uh, do the same thing, you know, do uh, just a bunch of silk braids and and check out check the tension on those. Um, I've got one. I've got one so that I, that people can see the pattern. Uh, unfortunately, I've got to figure out a better placement for it because this way doesn't work and this way doesn't work because it keeps doing this kind of thing. So I got to figure out a different uh, mounting position. Man, my, of course I'm a camera and my nose itches a lot now. So, uh, so I got to figure out a different camera mounting thing for that one. So, well, I have an idea of what I want to go ahead and do. Um, you know, get one of those swing arms. You, uh, uh, Gamer Dad has got one. I think Duff's got one now. Uh, so it's just something that I can clip to the table, and it'll I can basically flip it up and and set it so that it's straight down and then it's not in the way of the braid so um, and I may have to go ahead and upgrade my uh, upgrade my um, cameras too because you know I don't know if I'm happy with these but it gets me gets me going so hello to my other viewers that just joined us um, so what I'm doing is Japanese loop braiding. Uh, it is the original traditional method of making laces for Japanese armor and uh, weapons and uh, clothing ties, scroll ties, anything that, uh, that they needed a kind of cordage or flat, uh, a flat weave or a flat braid for. This is how they did it. Um, if uh, you have a specific question about what I'm doing, or if you want me to slow down, uh, let me know. Or if you want to see how I'm doing a specific move, you know, let me know. Just go ahead, ask questions. That's why I'm doing this. Um, I'm getting ready to finish up this braid. This is just regular embroidery floss. Uh, it, the braid itself is not for anything in particular. It is uh, part of my tension experiment. Uh, one of the things that affects loop braiding uh, across all cultures is maintaining tension in multiple directions. Um, and two of the directions we as braiders have kind of developed, you know, muscle memory skills to, to take care of. But the last one, that no matter what we do to adjust for it, we just can't get rid of it, the uh, the issue, and that's that's over tensioning at the end of the braid. And really, uh, what a lot of braiders do to fix that is they stop right about now, right about here, um, probably about a, a palm or longer of loop left. They'll just stop it there. Because in that way, it's a pretty good safe bet that the braid will be nice and even up to that point. Uh, but if you go all the way to the end and try to use up all of your material, um, the braid tightens up real fast. Um, braid, the braid will get real narrow. The pattern gets real short. So um, I've got, uh, I think, two more to do in the DMC floss and then I'll move on to doing silk so the plan is to show that regardless of the material type that we use um, the uh, the tension uh, basically is proportional to the different aspects you know so you know how wide uh, how far you spread your hand um, you know, doesn't really affect the ch 
change in tension. Now it will affect how much tension is in there, of course, but um, if you're not maintaining the same spread, uh, you know, the angle of the spread doesn't matter. The, the tension change um, between hand spreading changes stays the same. Uh, same thing with, uh, you know, the other thing that tension for braiding, loop braiding is, is how hard you pull. So uh, when you start out, you're kind of pulling a little tight. And then as you go on, you're relaxing a little bit. But the idea is to not let the, the braid droop at all. So, uh, but as you get closer, it just doesn't matter what you do. The end of it just shrinks up. So, and uh, like I said, I'm almost done with this one. And then I'm going to go ahead and set up uh, for tonight. I'm going to go ahead and set up a silk bamboo braid so that people can kind of see a little bit better on what's going on. And also, so that way, if you want to see a particular braiding move, open, closed, over twist, um, G, F, E, um, you know, you can ask me and I'll be able to demonstrate it live on camera for you. So, so who else do we have out there? If, uh, you don't know much about Japanese loop braiding and you're interested in learning more exclamation uh, braid and that will bring up a, a very brief intro uh, to my blog where uh, I talk about the historical aspects of Japanese loop braiding and uh, how to do the different moves and a link to YouTube channels are in some of those blog posts so I do a uh, photo by photo or a photo step by step how to do moves and then there usually is a companion video for those who like to see video and then also uh, in that blog I talk about some of my thoughts and ideas theories about the different things of Japanese loop braiding so some of it is ideas about you know uh, what was hor what was historical, but we can't prove uh, because of lack of evidence. Uh, uh, or you know, or some of it is just uh, what can help us as modern braiders continue to braid uh, his in the historical style, but be able to continue on with our lives. So. There's an awful lot that we don't know about uh, Japanese loop braiding. Um, so the equipment, uh, as you can see in the background, uh, is a uh, one half of a Japanese uh, foot beater. So I'm currently using it as my anchor point and it's tied down to my table so that the whole thing doesn't move on me. So, um, you know. So we don't have any real clear instructions on how that was made. We only have pictures and uh, intentionally incorrect instructions so that are written in Japanese code. <laughs> so that can be interesting to deal with. Um, you know, and then unless you know the, some of the pieces were pr well preserved, they've all deteriorated. Um, most of what we have left over are uh, weapon laces and armor laces and and uh, ties for for tying up scrolls so so it can be kind of difficult sometimes to uh, figure out what was and what wasn't historical in this uh, which is why I like to I, I kind of am more of a experimental archaeologist I am more into the research you know the the whys and how to's and you know how we we, got, we have an end product, we have materials, we know some basic uh, moves. How, how do we get from A to, to, to D? And 
you know, without knowing what B and C are and, and that kind of thing. So that, that's what excites me, is that part. And uh, so we're just about done on this. And then I will uh, take this camera and actually flip it around so that you can see me um, prepare the next braid. So, do we have any questions? Anyone? Anyone? Bueller? Bueller? Alright. So, um, so finishing. Uh, for the most part on like my tension experiments or my practice braids, I don't worry about finishing techniques or I just take the loop ends and and do a uh, you know just do a half knot so welcome to the channel if you uh, have any questions about what you're seeing um, or if you want to see anything in specific let me know I'm actually getting ready to finish up this braid and start a new one so you got here just in time so what I am working on is Japanese loop braiding and uh, so and the braids that I'm doing right now are not for anything specific they're just part of a tension experiment uh, but uh, the braid I'm getting ready to start uh, I am going to be using a silk bamboo blend uh, from Patron Patron uh, Patton from Patton so I really like using this stuff, um, so it's really great, I think. And uh, I like using it because it shows up on camera really well versus uh, silk thread and uh, DMC embroidery floss. So, all right, get my fingers in here a few more times. I think we can end up back at the original start. So at this point, I'm not even trying to spread my hands. So just a few more minutes. Ah, well, I guess that means we're done. <laughs> All right, I'll let that one go for a second. Give my shoulders a rest. So, so the pattern that, that uh, I was working on, uh, this is, this is the pattern right here of that braid that I was just doing. So it's just a very simple um, two-step flat braid, open and closed, open and closed moves. Uh, and if you're interested in seeing how those are done, um, this next braid is all about that is it so you can ask about different moves and uh, what happens if I if I keep doing certain things over and over again or or how to do the different ones so I'll be happy to demonstrate all that um, and then this is the same pattern in uh, silk bamboo so it's a lot bigger to see so uh, if I got yeah so and then just to kind of show you what I was talking about before about braids uh, shrinking up real fast at the end so uh, this is the one I was working on this morning so here is the braid oh, come on focus focus there's too much background but so so now here's that same braid but as you can see oh there we go perfect as you can see um, the whole thing wants to twist this is just part of the nature of the of the braiding process so as you can see it shrinks real fast right there and uh, some of the loops just start laying up on each other as well 
So that that is literally laying on top of each other. And uh, for those who might be curious, I have tried several times to just turn off the autofocus and it is off but it won't stop doing it so I've turned it off in OBS and I've turned it off in the camera settings and it just won't stop so alright so I am gonna go ahead and switch cameras real quick so the main one is gonna disappear I guess it's just going to be that way. So, all right, let's get this one out of the way for now. Take this one. You can take a look at my beautiful face. Let's see how that looks. Perfect. Ignore the uh, stuff behind you. Come on. Oh, this light might actually be too much right now. Nope, still too much. Oh, of course, this one wants to keep the auto zoom off. So, forgive me, folks. I am going to try to fix that. Here we go. All right. So, how's it look, Ludo? Mm, what is my Oh. Drop an 18% of my frames. That's not good. Mm, I'll have to work on that. So, So when I'm doing um, test grades or if I'm practicing a pattern for the first, why am I looking at that camera and I can just look at that one? I don't know. So when I'm working on test braids or, or uh, you know, working on a, on a move, practicing it or something, uh, I, this is the kind of how I like to set up for it. And... Uh, uh, it basically a lot of loop braiders will tell you oh you need to uh, see clamps to measure everything out and it all has got to be exact and everything um, you, you don't need a C clamp it's very easy just make sure you got enough kind of pulled out just take the end of it pinch it and then see if we can get it all on camera so and you're just gonna stretch it out to your office shoulder and then that's all the measurement you need so we're just going to take that one, pinch it in half, and then we're just going to go ahead and measure out, and then measure out uh, the number of loops that you want for a particular color. So since I'm working on a seven loop uh, braid, I'm going to do four in this purple, and then I'm going to do three loops in this gray. So now what you want to do is you do try to want to get it as close as you can you know in measurement so so you're not too far off the closer you can get it the better um, but until you start doing high-end uh, patterns and and you're looking at trying to do museum replications and stuff like that um, this is close enough for what you're doing and then honestly when you go to tie off some of it you know you can take up some of that slack uh, some of those some of those mistakes 
So, and if you notice, I haven't cut anything. Um, the way I like to do this, you only need to make two cuts. One for each, well, let me take that back. You need to do as many cuts as you have colors, and that's it. So, one, and then uh, because you measure everything off of each other, you know, uh, I don't have to measure my arm again. So you measure once, and then you measure everything else off of that. That way, um, if you don't hit the same spot on your shoulder again and again and again, there, you don't have to worry about it. And of course, I buried the lead. There we go. So, just like before, just gonna line up the end right there. Hello, new viewer. I am starting a new braid uh, it, for Japanese loop braiding. And the material on this one is a silk bamboo blend from Patton. And I really love working with this stuff. It is very soft and uh, smooth, uh, although it tends to get the little wispy hairs. Um, but that's okay. Uh, a little bit of heat takes care of that. Uh, if you have any questions about what it is I'm doing, you know, just uh, just ping me. Well, uh, don't ping me. Sorry. Uh, just uh, ask in the message board. So, and uh, I'll be happy to to uh, answer. And so, uh, this braid that I'm putting together right now, it's a seven loop, and it's going to be. Uh, well, whatever moves you ask me to do. So, uh, part of my stream is that I want to share how to do this uh, for people, and then uh, you know get people asking and, and maybe doing and and such as that. Now, the way I'm doing this. One of the things is if you are at all OCD about your ends and making things all nice and neat, this is not the technique for you because it will drive you batty in trying to unknot everything so it's all nice and smooth. Now, if you are interested in that kind of setup, let me know and uh, we will do something like that at a future video. So, all right. And so basically, once you take your, your long loop, hopefully you saw a lot of that on camera. Uh, if not, I apologize. But I took that long loop and all I did was just fold it over and uh, folded it over and put a just, a, just an overhand knot and that's it. So, all right, give me a second. I am going to switch back to the other camera so you can see my hands. And then I'm going to go ahead and mount this onto my leader cord. All right, be back. You saw a lot of that. Um, I thought I had turned off that camera, and I didn't. So, all right. Look at that. You can have camera reception or something. Camera and camera and camera. Well, I'm going to go ahead and get that out of the screen. Welcome back, Ludo. Hello to the new followers. Or, I'm sorry, not followers, viewers. Hello, hello. Um, 
I'm just setting up a brand new braid uh, and uh, oops, I am going to use my little PVC pipe cheater hands to hold some things while I set up. Um, well, I am working on Japanese loop braiding tonight. Um, if you have any questions at all, uh, let me know. As a matter of fact, this braid uh, I've set up specifically for uh, for you all to demonstrate uh, how to to do certain moves. So if you want to know about Japanese loop braiding, um, you know this is where you can learn how to do the different moves: uh, open, closed, um, over twist. Uh, if you want to get real deep into it, there's a, a, a G and F moves and uh, E moves, and so it can get real complicated. Well, I don't want to say complicated; it's very dexterous. Let me put it that way. Um, but just like anything else, it, it's just practice. You can do it. Anybody can do it. Um, so let me go ahead and swap out the braids. Um, if you haven't. Or if you just now joined us, uh, you missed me finishing uh, a previous braid, and so, but that one was part of a uh, a tension experiment. So, so, um, but this one, I am setting this one up so that you can ask me questions all about the questions. All right. So do I have any questions yet? All right, let me turn this light back on so that the camera doesn't flicker. So I've, I've figured out, I gotta maybe tweak and work on the lighting a little bit more but I have found that um, if I don't have this light on then what happens is my webcam will um, flicker basically between the two different uh, light intensities and that's simply just from my hands being doing this so as you see that the shadow on the wall um, Imagine that across the whole camera. So, so I'm going to start with this side. Now, like I said earlier, you know, if you are at all anal retentive about knots and strings being straight and, and stuff like that, the method I used earlier is not your friend. And um, but it's okay to do a little bit of of a uh, unknotting but don't get too obsessive because essentially it will become uh, it is impossible really to try to unknot all of this uh oh did i make an extra loop One, two three four five i did make an extra loop all right i have a eight loop Read. That's okay. Um, let's see, what do I want to do? Um, put that on the thumb for now. Let's see. I don't know if you all want to see thumb um, mounted breeding yet. So I may just go ahead and drop one and leave it yeah, that one just seems all kinds of twisted around we're just gonna all right so all right I'm gonna do a couple of quick um, uh, uh, you know, I'm just going to drop that one. And let's go ahead and cut it out. Since this braid doesn't really matter for anything. Mm -hmm. 
just kind of making this part a little easier though. Push everything back. So uh, this is a basic setup for uh, for loop braiding. Uh, on a seven, you start off with four on one hand, three on the other. Uh, now, some patterns will tell you, you know, you need so many on the left hand, so many on the right hand. Um, Japanese, it tends to be odd numbers, uh, odd and odd, or even and even but occasionally you do get a few um, where it's an odd number of total loops and in that case it'll be one hand is an odd and one hand is the even and generally the left hand will be the even numbers um, sometimes though you'll see something like it'll be uh, if it's a seven loop you might have two uh, two loops on one hand and five on the other um, and that's for specific pattern reasons so, uh, is, does anybody have any any requests for a particular move? Um, this braid is all about showing you uh, loop braiding moves for Japanese techniques. Hello, new follower or new viewer. Um, I am doing Japanese loop braiding, and uh, this braid is a, a silk bamboo blend. And uh, this braid is to demonstrate Japanese loop braiding moves. Um, so I'm letting you, the viewers, kind of uh, ask me to do, you know, demonstrate different moves. Uh, open moves, closed moves, over twist, um, and maybe some of the more advanced moves um, if you've already been following uh, loop braiding in general. So, so. Uh, anything Let's see. all right well I'm just gonna go ahead and start with some of the basics then so um, so one of the things that the for basic um, loop braiding you want to put your finger through the loop so, and then, so what you're going to do is you're going to go through the first loop, through that second loop, through the third loop. So, let's see if we can get that camera angle. So, right there. So, I've gone through all of them. And then, on an open move, that last one, you're going to put your finger in there. And it doesn't matter if you go up or grab the bottom one. I'm more comfortable grabbing up. A lot of people are. Um, but some people find it easier to go down so you're just going to grab that top loop or the top shank in your finger in the crook of your pinky and you're just going to kind of rotate your hand down so that you're uh, so that you're trapping it and then you're just going to pull your finger back through so see if i can get this uh let's see I am going to change this camera see for side angle and see if we, we can get a better shot of that of what's going on versus straight on all right so we're gonna go through one two three and we're gonna go through that last one and we're just gonna rotate so that way we're trapping that loop and all we're going to do is just going to pull all of our fingers through just like that and then you got to let go so just let it roll off your index finger like that and then spread your hands so now what I'm doing right now is is I didn't do a very neat job of tying this knot off so there's a big old mess at the front and it doesn't really matter uh, for demonstration purposes so uh, but the first couple times, you kind of got to pull and things like that to make things work. So, and then, so now we're just going to go ahead and walk the loops up. I would push this camera back a little bit further, but the, uh, the cable is not long enough. 
Um, so we're just going to walk, and basically the, I'm just going to take my index finger, I'm going to pick up that loop from the middle finger, pull the middle finger out, grab the one from the ring finger, and the ring finger is going to grab the pinky, and then there's that. So, and that's walking your loops up. And then, let's see how it looks from here, maybe we can, I'm going to do the same move again, let's see. And then, oops. so open move is you're just going to go in the in, rotate around, and pull, let go, spread your hands, and walk your up. I don't like that from that side. I think I will either ignore showing from the this hand in favor of this uh, side. Or, oh, you know what? I know what I'll do. Give me a second. I am going to switch sides so that you can see against a better, hopefully a better background. All right. So let's see if we can do that again. go through rotate uh, it might actually be a decent angle to so you can see it from the other side so I'm just gonna grab and trap that shank pull everything through let go walk everything up and spread so and then Through, 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 through. No, nope, I don't like that angle either. Sorry, folks. I'm just I'm trying to figure out a good way for you to see what's going on uh, from the perspective of when you're going to be doing it. Um, so, and if you hear a little boy in the background, um, that's my son. He is eight with severe ADHD so he is outside uh, getting his uh, running on so he can be nice and exhausted physically and mentally to go to sleep so all right so through through um, the kind of things that Japanese loop braiding is can be used for um, the braids can be used for anything that needs cordage um, the as you see the kabuto in the background um, it would be you know there were braids uh, flat braids for lacing up armor there's flat braids for uh, sword wraps um, there are braids uh, you know braids can be used for tying scrolls shut um, you know clothing ties um, uh, you know uh, you know anything that you need lashed um, so the little the little bundles where they would bundle their clothing you know if it was a special bundle uh, or a special set of clothing you know they would use a you know a nice uh, loop braid to to tie that shut um, if you are into historical reenactment um, anything that the Europeans would have used a braid a narrow band weaving um, uh, anything like that that's what the Japanese loop braiding is used for so the difference between uh, Japanese and European cordage um, uh, the Europeans had you know probably half dozen different ways and the Japanese just used this technique for all of it um, there are there are traditional patterns, um, so this is not a weave. Um, just to be a little, um, he, a little picky here. So uh, this is actual braiding um, and not weaving. So, but there are traditional patterns. Uh, so a lot of times.
the tortoise shell pattern uh, is traditionally seen on weapons and armor. Um, there is, there are two patterns that are known as temple patterns. Um, uh, so uh, they, as far as we know, because we've only seen them in in those specific temples that they're named after, and they were always used for tying scrolls shut. Um, so. So the ones that we do know, um, we only know because of, of historical evidence. Uh, as for the other patterns, um, you know, we know the patterns exist. We have pictures of them. We have examples of them, um, or they're, they are uh, laid out in some of the manuals. Um, so we know that they exist, but we don't know what they were used for. So. Uh, you know, so it's, some of it is just, we just don't know. So, um, you know, if you see a pattern that you like, um, you know, feel free to use it for anything, really. So, um, I'm more into uh, historical, um, or not historical, I'm more into the architectural, um, uh, experimental architectural. Man, I am just flubbing things tonight. Um, I'm more into the experimental archaeology, figuring out whys and hows. Uh, favorite pattern? Oh, um, um, there, well, I like the turtle shell one. Um, it's very easy. Um, it looks like it would be complicated, but it's very set of easy instructions. Um, so unfortunately i have not done one yet uh, there are two kinds um, that we know of there is a two person and a four person uh, now the four person um, is a lot of loops uh, 72 different loops and basically i would have to construct a uh, custom uh, hand holders to set that up and the two-person one, well, what I have right now, I could do a two-person braid with. Um, we don't have the full instructions for a two a two-person turtle turtle shell uh, pattern. So, uh, Messina, um, she I don't know if she's on. If she is, go ahead and wave hi. Um, but Messina has been working on figuring out the two-person. Uh, pattern so we know what the moves are um, we know the orders of the moves but what we don't know about that pattern is um, the number of colors uh, and the placement the color placement so uh, when I started I started out with you know all four of the purple on one hand and all three of the uh, the gray on the on the right hand um, but I can you can create even just with this you can create different patterns by shifting the order of the colored loops around and then you can add uh, even more changes to it by making uh, the loops uh, bicolored so that the top uh, shank is one color and the bottom shank is another color uh, so you can even from just the very basic uh, uh, patterns uh, or set move sets you can create different patterns and different looks so um, so let's see so for the open move like we were like we were doing before it's through 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 and then for open it's through I like to grab the top but you can grab the bottom um, so and I just kind of pull that pinky around a little bit. It's almost like you're wrapping the loop the loop around your pinky and pull it through. And spread. So, and then the other basic move is uh, uh, closed. And so we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go through, through, through. And this time, instead of going through the loop, we're going to come from the outside of the loop so you can come roll downward and trap it this way by your pinky or 
you can come up from underneath and grab it. And what this does is this will actually put a twist into the loop. So, and it makes that loop twist 180 degrees. And what it will do is it will interlock the top and bottom half of the loop shanks and we'll get one braid. So for that again, we're gonna go ahead through the loop, through the loop, through the loop, and then from outside, we're gonna grab that top shank, we're gonna pull it through, and spread. So now if you do the open over and over and over and over again, uh, you will end up with two uh, two braids that are called, uh, they like to call them pigtails. Um, so there'll be two identical braids, very thin and narrow. And if you do the closed move uh, over and over and over again, you'll get a square braid. Um, and then by combining the open and close in different orders, you can create different uh, patterns and, and such um, by, um, let's see, if you alternate, your open and close, open, close, open, close. Um, that is called a two-step flat braid. Um, and uh, if you if you want a piece of trim, here's a little. Here's one of the favorite things I like to tell people um, about uh, loop braiding um, and doing a two-step flat braid uh, is that you can do open, close, open, close, open, close to get your flat braid. And then what you do is you do um, I don't know five to ten open moves and then you go back to your flat braid and then what you've done is you now have a piece of trim that you can put onto a cloak uh, a jacket a uh, you know anything that you want to put buttons through you have braided a uh, a piece of trim with built-in button loops um, so that and you can make it whatever colors you want you can you know, play around with the patterns and make it um, different patterns and uh, stuff like that. Hello, new viewer. We are working on Japanese loop braiding. So, uh, let me check something. I'm taking a small break um, for my neck and my shoulders. Uh, if you have not done this before, uh, this is a heck of a neck and shoulder workout and upper back so all right so all right we'll do the closed again does anybody have a specific oops i just went on autopilot right there so through 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 and then we're going to go around the outside pull through walk everything up spread does anybody have any questions do you want to see something else um, so we're gonna go through through and then rotate around and pull through so is there any questions about this that anybody has um, so if you are want to know more about uh, Japanese loop braiding, I do have a blog. And right there. So in that blog, I talk about the historical aspects and uh, you know what we do know for a fact, uh, what we you know, the, as a community, what do we think we know? Um, I give some thoughts and ideas about how they got from A to D um, without knowing what B and C were. And um, so we do that. Um, oh, I know what my other problem is. I need to take a drink. Let me get some water. Say hello to my son. He has uh, raspberry blue hair. Yes. <laughs> Come on, Charlie. It's reading time, baby. Oh, 
Till day night night. All right. You you're not gonna say night night. Night night night. All right. Yes. You gonna you gonna wait to the to the viewers? Can they see him? Yeah, they can see him. Well, hot damn. Yeah. How? Hey, I don't have this on mature. You can't swear. Oh, excuse me. Well, that's my wife smokes. that you're hearing in the in the background. It's the peanut gallery. The dodo so, gallery. Uh, it's Charlie. Come on, buddy. Time now. Come on, All right. Buddy. So, uh, <laughs> does anybody have any questions? Is there anything you want to see, or do you just want to see me makey makey? They don't know they're still being yeah. recorded. <laughs> um, so, uh, one of the things about loop braiding, um, this is a seven foot table, and you are only seeing about five feet of it. Um, so, it takes up a lot of space. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> I have my own my own table just for this. So. All right, I'm going to go ahead and, and you know what? I'm going to show you uh, another move. Um, this is a kind of a quasi basic move and it's called the over twist. And I'm going to show you the easy way to do this one. And uh, maybe later on we'll do, um, you know, in a future video, we'll do the more uh, complicated version. So basically what we're going to do is we're going to do an open move. Just going to pull that through, walk our fingers across and then we're going to go ahead and do a closed move to bring it back under the other hand. And then we're just going to pick it right back up to the original hand. Um, and so now what that, what that has done is that has uh, twisted this loop uh, 360 degrees. So if you were working at specific color patterns, then you would be able to... Um, you would be able to, to uh, you know, maintain your color order. So if you had a bicolored loops uh, and you needed a specific color to be on top, you could use that. Um, you know, to go back to uh, your question, cosplay Lisa, um, my favorite pattern. So I do have a couple of Kumihimo uh, patterns that I really like, and Kumihimo is the stand and bobbin. Uh, version uh, of loop braiding and what uh, uh, so that makes some completely different braids um, than than the loop braiding uh, can definitely get a lot more complicated on those um, so oops I forgot to twist that up Oh, you know what? That first one, I didn't do a full twist. I'm sorry. I actually demonstrated that wrong. So it's not an open move. Um, you're going to do a closed move. Walk everything up. And then you're going to do... So if you grab from the top and pull it through for your closed move, what you want to do is grab from the bottom so that everything is twisting in the same, in the same direction. Um, or the other way that you can do it is just take it and do a straight transfer and then do the closed move again so that way everything is going in this is twisting in the same direction and you don't accidentally untwist it so um, so I forgot to twist that one so one of the neat things that you can do by doing, now if you do uh, the over twist over and over and over again, and you don't do anything different, you will get the same square braid that you do for doing a regular close move. However, if you um, do a open closed, uh, or rather, I'm sorry, an open and over twist, um, and you repeat that open over twist open over twist and you pull real hard real hard and spread across real hard so basically you're intentionally 
over tensioning this and you can make a triangle braid yes a three-sided braid um, whereas in uh, you know you would need a uh, Mara die from Kumihimo to do something like that and I got sidetracked in telling you my other my favorite Kumihimo patterns uh, there is a Kumihimo pattern that I really like it is a leaf braid done on a Takadai and I think I might have figured out how to how to do it in um, loop braiding but uh, I have several other projects in mind already so so that's kind of fallen off to the backside a little bit so all right does anybody again please please ask questions um, you want to know about the historical stuff you want to know about some of the things that you're seeing in the background um, you know do you you know timeline anything you want to know please ask I'm going to go ahead and say that looking at my battery for my laptop um, I'm going to say that I will do this for about another five minutes or so and then I'm going to have to cut the stream off so that my laptop doesn't die right in the middle of the stream that would not be good, I think. Oh, you know what? Looking at this camera, I think I've, this might be a better way to show how to do the different opens and closed. So, um, we'll put all those in the back. So, basically an open. We're going to go through. All right and you can grab the top one or you can grab the bottom one so what you're looking to do is kind of sort of almost like you're wrapping that loop around your finger so that it'll come out and you gotta let it come off your finger and then the closed is you can grab from the top same thing so you're gonna wrap your finger around the top one or if you come from underneath you can come underneath and grab it and then let it go. So hopefully that'll be a better view for what is going on and being hidden by my sausage fingers. So So as you can see some of the things that I'm doing is, uh isn't exactly how I showed you um, in that I am doing my hand spreading at the same time as I'm walking things up and then I'm also you know rotating for that that to over twist um, as I go to start the next one and these are the kind of little things that as you go through you pick up the different shortcuts to do. Oops. All right. Oh, there is my laptop beeping at me. I thought I had five minutes. All right. So I am going to have to actually cut this off now. Sorry, I said five minutes, but my laptop battery is screaming at me now. So, um, one of the things um, is that I do uh, talk about how to make a 
handy hand holder so that this doesn't go blah and that you know you have to try to figure out your loop positions and what was where so little PVC pipe and so starting I like to start from inside out and then that way everything lines up so this was the index finger the middle finger ring finger I'm just gonna stick that back down and then the other side same thing and this way you know if you got life you got work you know the braid is taking forever or you're doing a multi-person braid um, this gives you a chance to put things down So, all right. Um, last chance for questions. Um, whoop, sorry about that. No, there's not an earthquake. Um, so, last thing. Uh, that is my social media. So, uh, my Twitter account. Uh, the uh, there will be postings of my uh, loop braiding and postings about my uh, miniature painting and Gundam model building. So if you get into that, you know, watch out for other streams where that's what I'm doing. Uh, my Instagram, or let me go back to Twitter. Twitter also, I have, you know, some of my sports stuff and news feeds are there as well on the Twitter. Uh, Instagram, that's all pictures, just my uh, braiding and miniature painting stuff. And then again, there's my braiding blog. Um, if you're interested, there is a Facebook group for loop braiding. It is the Known World Loop Manipulation. Um, and you can look for that on Facebook. Um, if you're not in the SEA, uh, just you know, mention in the questions that you saw me on on uh, Twitch and we'll get you approved. All right. Well, thank you all for joining me. Um, again, please, if you got any questions, let me know and uh, or type them in. And I will see you all next time, tomorrow morning at uh, 10 a.m. Central Standard Time.